Hi everyone, my name is Courtney and I'm Fiber Fox Studios and today for Mosaic Monday we are actually going to do a blast from the past and redo pattern number two's tutorial. So I have updated the chart set as well so that it will represent all of the things that this video will teach you today. Hopefully this video will still be very helpful to those of you who are beginners because I do explain what we're doing and why we place our stitches the way that we place them. But I'm also hoping that it's tolerable for my more advanced watchers who have been along with me for a long time now. In today's video, I'm going to go over our swatches real quick and then we'll be jumping right into the tutorial. Keep in mind, always down in the description, you will find a link to the crochet hook I'm using. I also list the yarn information for those of you who are interested in that. And today, because I am showing how we cut the end and cinch it down, the scissors i'll link those down in the description as well there's also project ideas and any information that i give you in the tutorial about the different patterns that will all be in the description as well as the row start time so lots of information can be found just down in the description for our samples today pattern number two actually is kind of a three-in-one pattern because when we begin working the pattern when we reach row five, we actually have a pattern in itself. You could stop right there at row five. It's kind of that zigzag design. Same thing I did in my mosaic double border on the Native Bliss shawl. So same deal there. But you can work just the first five rows and get this design. Or you can continue up and you can work to row seven and then you will repeat rows four through seven as many times as you want to achieve this design. And then of course, if you're going for what we're here for today, which is pattern number two, as it originally was designed, that is this one right here. So you work the full tutorial and I show you the transition row and how you continue to move up to work this for a larger project. This particular Video is based off of a multiple of four plus four. If you're working flat, you can work flat or in the round with this. You are going to need two colors of yarn minimum. That's not a two sided design. All the back sides look the same, they're striped. So that's what your back side looks like. We begin by chaining in color A in our multiple of four. So you're going to chain four over and over as many times as you would like. And then if you're working flat, you are going to add four more chains to that chain count. If you are working in the round, you are just going to simply chain in the multiple of four over and over, and then you will slip stitch to the very first chain you made and form a ring, and then you will be working the repeats given in the video in that same stitch that you slip stitched into. We are now going to begin row number one, and to begin row one, we need to skip the first chain from our hook and move here to the second and do our border stitch or what I refer to as the traditional single crochet because that's what we're doing here. So you're going to go into that complete stitch and then grab and pull up a loop and do a single crochet just like normal from there. Now our repeat for row one begins and we're going to be working a back loop only single crochet into every single stitch. So all of our repeat stitches when we're doing a single crochet, we are always picking up the back loop only and that is how we work our single crochet just in that one side of the stitch. It's really important that you do that. You'll see later on in the pattern. So we're going to continue to work placing a single crochet in every single stitch and you're going to know you just work that single crochet by picking up the one side, the back loop only. So continue to work and meet up with me at the end of the row where we will be doing a traditional single crochet into the final stitch of the row. But we'll meet up to do that together. We are now here at the end of the row. We have one stitch left. So we've worked a single crochet in all of our stitches working in that back loop. 
Now we're going to work in our final stitch of the row. We do a traditional single crochet in the last stitch of every single row. So this is how all of our row ends work. Now we're in there and we single crochet just like normal. So now we're going to chain up and bind off. And this is how I do my bind off. You do not have to do it exactly like me. But for those of you who wanted to see this, all we do is we chain up two. So one and two. And now we need to clip our yarn. And we just take our hook and we pull that up. So we pull that loop out the top. Now we're going to grab our tail. And then we're going to take our thumb and index and place it right above on that strand of yarn above our two chains. And I'm going to pull up on this tail while I push down with my thumb and index going towards those chains. So I just pull down and it cinches it into a little tiny knot. Now we're going to move on to row number two. So row two, we're going to move back here, staying on the same side of our work, and we're going to move back here to the first stitch in our row. So as you can see from our turning chain that we had, we have a little side bump that we can scoot down out of the way. We want to make sure that we see the full V. That's our first stitch, and that's where we need to insert our hook in to do our traditional single crochet to start our row. So we go completely into our stitch. Now we're going to grab color B and we're going to add color B onto our hook. You can do it with a slip knot or the yarn over the hook. It doesn't matter. But we want to get our color B on our hook. Now we're going to draw up that loop. I like to grab the tail and the working yarn in chain one. And then I'm going to let the tail fall. And we're going to go back down in there and finish out our traditional single crochet. So we're still in that first stitch. And that's our traditional single crochet. So now our repeat for row number two is exactly like row one. This is another one of our setup rows. So row one and row two are always basically setup rows. And they are done by doing single crochets in all of our stitches. So again, only working in your back loops. You are doing your repeat for the row is a single crochet in every single stitch. So we just work one of those in every stitch. And we will meet up when you are ready for row number three. Last stitch in the row, traditional single crochet, and bind off. Row three begins now, and we are working in color A. Row three's repeat begins by doing one double crochet. So all of our double crochets are worked exactly the same way. We wrap our yarn just like normal, but we identify our next stitch and then we slide directly down and pick up this front loop that we left by doing those back loop only single crochets. So we're going to pick up that front loop and then we grab our yarn and pull up a loop. Grab our yarn again and pull through two. Grab our yarn again and pull through two. So that is all you need to do to do your double crochet. So that is our start of our repeat. Now we're going to be ending our repeat by doing three single crochets over these next three stitches. So we always work one stitch to one stitch. So there's our first single crochet. So there's one. two, and number three. So that ends our repeat for row number three. So let's recap what we've done. 
Row three's repeat is very simple. It's one double crochet followed by three single crochets. So you repeat that set of stitches over and over all the way down your row. So I'm gonna do the repeat with you one more time. So row three's repeat begins one double crochet, identify my next stitch, slide down, three single crochets. One, two, and three. And that ends the repeat. So you'll continue to work that exact set all the way down your row. Keep in mind, if you are new, when you're doing your double crochets, each double crochet that you place takes up one stitch back here on this row. So one double crochet takes up one stitch. When you go to move on to do your single crochets, you can fold this double crochet back and look, and you can see one stitch back there. And when you put the double crochet back in place, it covers it up, and that's how you know that this is your very next stitch. So that can be very helpful to you guys if you're brand new because you will lose your count and mess up your repeats if you work into the same stitch that the double crochet is supposed to be taking up. So we'll be back in just a moment for the row end for row number three. We are now here at the end of row three. So we have completed our repeat several times across this row and I have just ended the repeat with the three single crochets and I'm at the end of my row and at the end of every row you will have two stitches left. So in this next stitch we are going to restart the repeat for one stitch. So we just start with our beginning of our repeat which is a double crochet in this case. So we start over for one stitch and we're going to work a double crochet here. And then the very last stitch in the row gets a traditional single crochet, just like we learned earlier. And that is how you'll work all of your row ends. Restart your repeat for one stitch traditional single crochet in the last. A guide to whatever you're supposed to do here in this stitch is whatever you did at the start of the row. When you repeat it, your row end and beginning matches. So we'll move on now to row number four. Row four begins now and we are working in color B. Row four's repeat is really simple. We're gonna be working three single crochets followed by one double crochet. One. Two. Three. And then we work one double crochet. So that ends our repeat. So let's recap it real quick. Row four's repeat begins with three single crochets and it ends with one double crochet. So you're gonna continue to work that exact set of stitches over and over all the way down your row. And we'll meet back up when you're ready for row number five. And remember at the end of your row, you will restart your repeat for one stitch and then do your traditional single crochet in the very last stitch of the row. So we'll be back in just a moment. Row five begins now and we are working in color A. Row five's repeat begins by doing two single crochets.
There's one and number two. One double crochet. And we'll end our repeat by doing one single crochet right here into that next stitch. So that ends our repeat. So let's recap what we've done. Row five's repeat began with two single crochets, one double crochet, and we end with one single crochet. So remember, we'll start that repeat back over and continue to work. So it begins with two single crochets, one and two, one double crochet, And we end with one single crochet. So the same set over and over all the way down the row. And meet back up with me when you're ready for row number six. Remember, at the end of the row, you restart your repeat for one stitch. And then traditional single crochet into the last stitch of the row. So we are now going to move on to row number six, but I just wanted to point out before we do that right here in itself, this in itself is a pattern and you could stop right here on this video. You could keep repeating this over and over by rewinding to row two and working rows two through five over and over. And that would give you this kind of like Z zigzag type design. We're going to move on now to row six and we're going to be working in color B. Our repeat for row six begins with one single crochet. One double crochet. And we end with two single crochets. One and number two. So that ends our repeat, so let's recap. Row six repeat begins with one single crochet, one double crochet, two single crochets. So you'll start back over with that single crochet and work that exact set of stitches over and over on down your row. And then we will meet up when you are ready for row number seven. Row seven begins now and we are working in color A. And as you want to point out that you'll see right here on row six, when we end, we have the three single crochets and then our traditional single crochet. So that is the correct look to the row end for row six. So now we're going to move on to row seven. Row seven's repeat begins with one double crochet. And then we work three single crochets. One. Two. And three. So that ends our repeat for row seven. So let's recap. Row seven's repeat begins with one double crochets. And it ends with three single crochets. So one double three singles all the way down your row and then we'll meet up when you're ready for row number eight. Row eight begins now and we are working in color B for this row. 
I do want to point out that if you like the way this looks and wanted to continue just working a design like this, you can rewind to row four in this video and work rows four through seven to achieve this design. It would look just like this building out a bigger project but we're gonna continue with the design that I'm teaching today and we're moving on to row eight now. Row eight's repeat begins with one single crochet. One double crochet. And we end with two single crochets. One and number two. So that ends our repeat. So let's recap. Row eight's repeat began with one single crochet, one double crochet, and we end with two single crochets. So continue to work that exact set of stitches all the way down your row and then we'll meet back up when you're ready for row number nine. Row nine begins now and we are working in color A. Row nine's repeat begins with two single crochets. One. And number two. There we go. One double crochet. and one single crochet to end our repeat. So let's recap what we've done. Row number nine's repeat begins with two single crochets, one double crochet, and we end with one single crochet. So continue to work that exact set of stitches over and over on down your row, and we will meet up when you're ready for row number 10. Row 10 begins now and we are working in color B. Row 10's repeat begins by doing three single crochets. One, two, and three. And we'll end the repeat by doing one double crochet. So that ends our repeat, so let's recap it real quick. Row 10's repeat is three single crochets, one double crochet. So continue to work on down your row, meet up with me when you're ready. Row 11 begins now and we are working in color A. Row 11's repeat begins with one double crochet. And we end with three single crochets. One, two, and three. So that ends our repeat. So your repeat for row number 11 is one double crochet, three single crochets over and over all the way down the row. So we'll meet back up in just a second to talk about how you repeat this design to grow your project. So 
So from here, if you are moving on to another design, then you will not need any of the further instruction. However, for those of you who are going to use this pattern for an entire project or you want multiple repeats of it in a section of a project that you're doing, like a big project, like a blanket or something, we're going to need to do row 12, which is a transition row. And then from there, you will be able to rewind in this video and work rows three through 12 over and over to grow this design. But we need to do row 12 together. It's going to change the direction that our design is pointing in so that as you move up, you're gonna be alternating between the design pointing towards the left and then on the next set towards the right, then back to the left and so on. So we're going to do row 12 now. So join on color B to begin working. So row 12's repeat is pretty simple. All of them have been for this design though. So our repeat for row 12 begins by doing one single crochet. One double crochet. And we end with two single crochets. One and two. So that ends our repeat. So let's recap it real quick. Row 12, our transition row, repeat begins with one single crochet, one double crochet, and we end with two single crochets. So you'll continue to work that set of stitches on down through your row, the remainder of your row. And then from here, like I said, you can rewind back to row three and work rows three through row 12 over and over as many times as you like. And then on your final repeat of the design, I just recommend that you stop at row 11 as your final row when you finish up that section in the project or the project itself. So hopefully you have enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did enjoy this tutorial, please feel free to leave me a thumbs up and a comment down below. And as always, I appreciate you so much for watching. And until next time, bye for now.